Hi, this is Genevieve, and this is my finished Poison Ivy piece, and I'm going to show you how I drew it. I like to start out by making color swatches, um, especially if I'm working on new paper, so that I can tell how um, the paper is going to take the color and also what colors I want to use. This is my line art, and I start right in with the light skin color. That's um, E00, which is skin white. And I like to cut into the shadows where I'm going to put the shadows first. Um, I don't use, um, I'm going to go over this with darker colors later for the shadows, but kind of gives me a good idea of um, how I want to build the face with the shadows and everything. And I, I like to go over the lighter areas just really lightly so you can see even using just one color already I've got um, some shading going on in there. I leave um, light areas open on the cheeks and on the forehead. Now I'm going to go in with the um, darker shade which is Barley Beige, that's E11. And um, I'm going over the areas that I started with first with the lighter um, skin color. I'm just darkening. This is, um, the paper I'm working on is Strathmore toned tan and it's a pretty thin paper so it really soaks up the um, alcohol inks. They blend well but they also bleed so you have to be careful um, that they don't um, that you don't sink too much ink into the paper because it will um, bleed outside your lines if you're not careful. But as far as bleeding the colors into each other there it works really nicely. Now I'm adding um, peach, which is E93, I think that's T-Rose, I'm not sure, um, but it gives a nice peach to the cheeks. And then I go in with a darker peach, and that's um, E95. Now I'm using E000, because um, I felt like there was too much contrast between the peaches and the lighter area on the cheeks, so that kind of helped blend it into the paper a little bit better. Now I'm going back over with um, E00 to blend all of the darker areas together. And I finished with the face, so I'm doing the shoulders now. Kind of leaving light spots on the clavicle and on the upper part of the shoulders where the light's hitting. Again, I like to start where the shadows are going to be um, in an area and then work out from there. And I really like to use the brush end of the marker because um, when you brush outward you can kind of control um, how much color goes into the area. And I'm adding shadows now with the E11 again. And I think that's all I'm going to do. So now I'm switching to the greens. I'm going to start with her eyes. And then do her bodice. And this is the um, lightest shade of green. And I just go over um, to give it a nice base. And then um, I like to work light to dark. So once I've got the um, base in the lightest color, then I will go over it in the darker colors to give um, shadow and depth and shape. tricky working around all those tiny little leaves. So now I've got that in there. I'm going to go in with the um, my medium green. 
and I can't remember which one that was, but um, that's why I gave you that sheet at the beginning where I wrote out all the colors that I used in case um, people usually ask me what specific colors I use. So Gen generally for lighter skin tones, I always go with um, E00, um, E000, and um, E11. And I'm adding the medium green to the bodice. And I finished there, so I'm going to go in with a darker green. Again, those tiny leaves. And now I've got my medium green out again and I'm blending the darker green into the medium green. And I'm doing the same with the lighter shade of green here. Just so I can get smooth blends. And I think I decided that I wanted even more depth so I got out an even darker green just to um, add a little more depth to the shadows there. And now the lips, same thing, lightest color first, and then the darker shades. The more contrast you have between your lightest color and the darkest color that you use, um, the more it's going to pop. I think that especially shows um, here while I'm doing the hair. I started out with a, a yellow-orange, a light yellow-orange, and then I... Um, get progressively darker until I'm using a really deep scarlet red. And for the yellow orange I'm um, only coloring the areas where there's um, going to be highlights. This paper really absorbs ink a lot so I wanted to kind of save my markers and um, only use that yellow where I thought I would need it. So now I've got the orange and the orange is really the, the base color of her hair, not the lighter yellow. Um, so with this, I'm going to go over all of her hair in the orange. And I'm leaving um, areas light so that light yellow orange can show through where the light's kind of shining off her hair. Now I'm going in with a red, um, not my darkest red, but um, just a red to give more depth. And I tend to like to um, have smooth blends, so I use a lot of intermediary shades. Um, like instead of going from just yellow to orange to red, I've got a yellow orange, an orange, an orange red, and then a red red. But um, that's just my preference um, and I have a lot of markers so I can do that. So again I'm, I'm going over with red but I'm, I'm still leaving some areas for the orange to show through so that you can really get a sense of um, where the shadows are and um, just a little depth so the hair just kind of pops more. And this is where um, I'm adding the darker red. And I like to add a little um, red to the 
eyebrows too because eyebrows aren't just one flat color. Now I'm doing an olive color for the ivy leaves. Kind of gives a nice contrast between the bright green of her bodice. Um, there's so much green going on that um, I wanted to try to find a way to not make all the green blend into each other. And I think the olive works well here. Lots of tiny little leaves to color. And now I go back through with a um, darker olive color to kind of just give a shadow. And I'm not spending much time doing the shadow on these because um, they're so tiny that the detail doesn't matter. It just matters that they have a little darker in there and so they pop. And later I'm going to get out my colored pencils and add just a tiny bright green um, highlight to the leaves. Now I'm doing the banner. I think I've, I'm using like E40 or E41 for these. Something simple. Give a little shadow under there in the folded parts. And now I'm adding um, the pupils. Kind of like to do that after I've colored the eyes. I don't know why. It's just the way I do it. I'm taking my um, skin colored colored pencils, which um, they show up nicely on this toned paper. I'm just um, adding a little to the highlighted areas of the skin. Kind of hard to tell exactly um, the effect this is having, but I'll post a link to the finished piece so you can see how it looks. Doing the shadow of the whites of the eyes with the black and then blending it with the white color pencil. And the white really pops on this paper. So now I'm doing all of my last highlights here. A little on the cheeks and the eyelids and the nose. Clavicle. And there's that bright green. Once I'm done with this, I even take the white and I like to do a white, thick white outline around the entire piece. Which I don't show in the video because that would just take way too long. So there she is. All done. Thanks for watching.